devil you know with they bleed red kind of simple kind of basic not very creative but there's a lot that we need to talk about this is a group that a couple years ago looked to kind of redefine metalcore a little bit maybe not so much redefine it but give it a little bit of a facelift give it some things that maybe it needed in order to be revitalized a little bit and captivate audiences once again because we're still getting very similar aspects of this formula. It's not something that's been given that tweak or given that necessary kick in the ass in order to get revitalized once again, even though a lot of the old groups are still releasing material, including Killswitch Engage, who Howard Jones was once a part of. So here on the second album, uh, we need to talk about whether or not one thing that really held back The Beauty of Destruction, which was their first album, The Devil You Know, uh, was taken care of. It, it seemed like that album had a lot of great ideas, however, the romance had not happened internally in the Devil You Know camp, where it seemed like they knew what they wanted to do uh, with the project and how they wanted to accomplish the goal of giving uh, Metalcore a facelift and really becoming uh, a group that stood out in the crowd. So on the second album, this was a goal that needed to be reached in order for this project to really seem pretty viable. And I think that they were able to figure it out. I think that romance had the opportunity to occur over the time that has passed since album number one and album number two, principally because this album feels and uh, sounds like it has just a little bit more to offer and kind of explores some different avenues a lot more, which you don't actually get right away whenever you pop this disc on, because Consume the Damned almost sounds like their grand idea of you know, sort of shifting things up was just to get as loud as possible and kind of dial up the evil a little bit, you know, dial up the uh, the growling vocals and basically have Howard go to some of his lows. And it actually works fairly well, but it sounded a little bit simplistic at first until you recognize just how committed that they were to it, until you realize they were going to go 130% balls deep with this uh, for Consume uh, the Damned. But then we get into tracks such as Your Last Breath, either that or Stay of Execution. Stay of Execution being the single that we all heard that got many people very interested in what this album was going to sound like. But Your Last Breath showcases a little bit more of a smooth and solid songwriting. This is actually one that reminds, will remind some people a little bit more of the Gothenburg sound. A little bit more of that Swedish death metal that has a little bit of the uh, metalcore harmonies that really back it. And it showcases just how close these, uh, both of these sides of music are really from being brethren, you know, essentially being brothers, but there are keynote differences that definitely separate them. And this is one where it bleeds from the metalcore into more of the melodic death metal instead of it being vice versa. And this is a great track also because of the guitar work. This is handled very nicely and the overall writing on this song feels very strong. This probably would have been a better single than Stay of Execution. However, they went the route of Stay of Execution, which is fine also. Now, you get through the remainder of this album. You get through the, the middle to the latter portions, and that's where the album expands a little bit and opens up. On the very first couple of tracks, we were talking about how there was a lot of direct assault you know, with the first two tracks with Consume the Damned and uh, The Way We Die. And then as the cleans were introduced and as the songwriting opened up a little bit, it's almost as though they were unfolding their dream one petal of a flower at a time. And by the time you reach about seven or eight songs in, that flower has been exposed and you kind of see where they're going with it. Uh, that's something where the songwriting is sort of uh, inconsistent, but it's less inconsistent than on the first disc. This is one where it just feels like there is some real strength in songs such as Let the Path Take Hold, either that or Searching for the Sun. Uh, and then other tracks feel like they just didn't quite have that one oomph, you know, that little oomph factor to it, or needed that oomph factor in order to make it compare to some of the other stronger songs uh, on the disc. But I do like the fact that Howard's vocals are sort of all over the place. They have cleans, they have growls. It's something where he's allowed to get sort of as violent as he wants, while at the same time also being extremely harmonious and 
you know, taking those cleans to a level that he's very comfortable with, but even allowing him to explore some uncomfortable territory. I, I like the fact that whenever you get to uh, Broken by the Cold, the very final track on this disc, it's one that isn't necessarily all of that brand new. It's not something that's wild and crazy. It's not breaking the mold as a lot of final tracks you, you kind of hope that they do. But it's instead one that's solid enough, and they give it some space to breathe. They give it 5 minutes and 20 seconds where it's able to keep your attention. You know, usually if you have something like that where it's it's a bit of a different timeline uh, as opposed to your other songs and it keeps your attention, you've done something right, and that's certainly true. There's also a couple bonus tracks on here, but probably the most noted of this one is a cover of Eye of the Tiger. Now, Eye of the Tiger is not a very difficult song to fuck up. Well, okay, I said that wrong. It's not a very difficult song to get right. Now, some might say that this is a great version of the track, and I agree that the chorus section, which is absolutely legendary, is done very well, and it still maintains that epic feel. I, I just don't know if this version really is is all of that well-tailored. It's, it's an above-average cover of it, but it's one that I don't prefer. But it's still really fun to hear a song like this reimagined by a band such as Devil You Know. So regardless to whether or not I don't you know enjoy it all that much, I love the fact that they did this, and I love the fact that uh, this is the song that they chose, considering they could have gone with any sort of metal classic or any sort of metal standard, and instead they opted to go the route of Eye of the Tiger, which is just really super cool. You know, it's something that needs to be checked out at least once, that way you can deliver your own verdict on it. As far as delivering a verdict on this album, it's one that would be about an 82 out of 100. This is definitely an improvement over their first album. Uh, they Bleed Red may not be the you know most clever of album titles. In fact, it's kind of blunt. But this is an album that is not merely blunt. It's one that has a lot of different sides to it, which certainly boasts where the writing is going. It shows that that romance has happened within the Devil You Know camp and has produced some much better results. And that's something to celebrate, considering uh, this album, some people probably don't even know that this is out yet. This is probably going to come to uh, as a surprise to a lot of you. So let me know what you think about it once you get the opportunity to hear They Bleed Red by The Devil You Know. I'm Cover Killer Nation, and hold on for just a second. Uh, just so you all know, uh, I have a Patreon page now that you can hop on over to and check out. We're looking to accomplish some pretty awesome goals for this channel and for the myriad of Cover Killer Nation related channels. And we're also going to be switching and jumping over to Twitch for our live streams, which is a huge, huge, huge bonus. So there's going to be a pair of links both in the description box and somewhere around me that you can go to visit both of these pages. If you're on Twitch, definitely uh, subscribe or follow, rather, Cover Killer Nation on Twitch because that's where the live streams will be from here on in. And please consider a uh, donation to the Patreon page. That way we can get some of these cool things going. And if you do happen to do that, I would be tremendously grateful for you. Uh, and we'll do some cool stuff. I, I like to do cool stuff with the patrons. This is brand new, so we're going to do some cool stuff down the line. Thanks, guys, and I will see you guys with the next review, which will hopefully be coming within the next day or so. I also have another surprise that was mentioned in the last video, uh, which is the Vanden Plaz review. So if you haven't checked that out yet, I highly recommend that you do so. Thanks.